I want to bring in now former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett. Uh, Mr. Bennett, thank you so much for joining us. I'm very grateful. You've not actually been on ABC News yet, so let me just offer you our condolences as what's happened this week. Can I start by asking you, what has the week been like for you, just on a personal level? Very difficult. Um, I lost friends. I lost uh, sons of friends and uh, daughters of friends. And uh, I'm uh, working very closely with uh, the military units. I myself am a veteran in uh, one of the uh, elite units of uh, Israel and uh, very much uh, trying to help out. But while my heart is broken, like many Israelis, uh, the spirit in Israel is very strong. Across the board, we're seeing a ballpark of 130 uh, percent enlistment rate uh, for reservists, meaning more reservists than are actually enrolled uh, want to come and fight because we're fighting for our, for our country, and I'm proud to be Israeli. Uh, we've also seen, obviously, great and deep sadness in this country, shock. But it has felt to us that there is anger now growing among Israelis about what's happened, including among the families of hostages who had signs outside the defense ministry here saying that they felt that Benjamin Netanyahu had blood on his hands. Are they right? I can uh, fully understand the uh, anger, frustration and uh, shock. Uh, we, we took a big hit. There's no way around that. But uh, we're, in, we're at war right now. And uh, we're between the first phase where we took the huge hit and the second phase where we're hitting back. Uh, and over the next uh, few days, we're going to launch a massive uh, attack on Hamas. It's going to be uh, tough. It's going to be long. Uh, we are asking uh, and allowing and encouraging all the civilians to protect themselves in Gaza by moving down south from the areas that we're going to operate. And I can say uh, that they are doing it. They are moving south. Uh, Israel is ready to fight. Uh, I've seen the worst sights I could imagine of uh, babies burnt, a pregnant woman whose baby was torn out of her stomach, uh, young girls raped and then burnt and shot. Uh, we're talking about a regime that is Nazi in its intent. And the only difference between it and uh, the Nazis is the ability. But uh, these people want to kill every Jew. And uh, that's what we founded the state of Israel for, to prevent them from doing it. So you, you've got a country that's uh, very badly hurt but we're very strong and we're, we've uh, collected ourselves and we're about to fight back and fight back strong. I do want to ask about the response. You know, you would have seen now more than 2,000 Palestinians have been killed in ongoing Israeli bombardments. I think the world understands that Israel wanted to figure out a response. But is this just revenge? We're going to eradicate Hamas um, and uh, there is no revenge uh, applicable for shooting a two-month-old baby in its forehead and then shooting the baby's mom when they're hugged together or other atrocities. There's nothing that you can revenge for that. What we can do is defend ourselves and we will. And we're going to hunt down Hamas, and we're going to annihilate Hamas. Hamas can no longer exist. I mean, there are people in Gaza we've been speaking to who feel like this is revenge. I mean, I spoke to a man who's, who lost 17 members of his own family. These are not people who wanted uh, these individuals to come into Israeli territory and, and commit this terror attack. There, there are women and children who are dying. Uh, and there's now an ongoing humanitarian situation. The entire Gaza Strip has been blocked off from fuel, from water, from electricity. Most people around the world might say that this is collective punishment uh, and this is not proportionate. What would be proportionate? Uh, how do you respond proportionately to the rape 
of uh, young girls gang rape and then tearing their limbs off? How do you respond to the murder of a mom and her child, both of them uh, handcuffed and shot point blank? How do you respond to uh, dad and mom and their four children all burnt together? What is proportionate there? Well, that's for uh, the state of Israel to work out. But I think a lot of people would say that, you know, this is a terrorist organization that carried out these attacks on your people. And to respond by killing further innocent people might not be a proportionate response. That's certainly the criticism. But beyond that, people are wondering what the plan is here. If Israel was taken by surprise in this attack, didn't have the intelligence on Hamas's offensive capabilities, are you confident that Israel has the intelligence on its defensive capabilities? Is Israel being lured into a trap here in Gaza? And, and beyond that, what's the plan? Is there going to be occupation? I mean, what, what does Israel want to do after Hamas is wiped out from Gaza? We'll deal with that later, just like uh, no one asked, what are we going to do with Nazi Germany once uh, we eradicate the Nazis? This is a Nazi regime. It was elected democratically. Uh, you know that Hamas got a majority in the Palestinian vote. The uh, Hamas enjoys wide public support in Gaza. And, uh, you know, this uh, obviously we won't and never target civilians. But there is nothing that could uh, respond proportionately to this. Should we be sending 1,500 terrorists to go in and rape, murder, burn, shoot point blank uh, Palestinian babies? Is, is that the proportional response that you're talking about? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering how a, a democratic country like Israel responds proportionately without murdering, uh, without killing uh, women and children unnecessarily. That, that's, that's the question that most people no, but, watching you know, this when, when you are asking. When you use that term, when you use that term uh, murder, there, there's a big distinction. We're fighting terrorists. And sometimes uh, if uh, they hide cowardly behind citizens, then they're murdering their own citizens. We will never deliberately target citizens. While our enemy searched out and in their operation plans, they searched for babies and moms and old women. They kidnapped an 84-year-old Holocaust survivor. So there's no equivalency here. It's not two sides. There aren't two sides. There's one murderer side and the other side which is out defending itself. And we're going to continue to do that. Former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, thank you for your time. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.